Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're doing very great. This video is feedback of session number four that teacher Raul and I sent you um, last week. So, um, to start, I'm going to share the document. This session was about vocabulary and communication. Cierto, esta sesión estaba enfocada en vocabulario y communication at the hotel. To start the class, you had to work with this um, chart and have to match the three columns to make a phrase, an experience, ¿cierto? Debían escoger una palabra de cada una de las filas, ¿cierto? De las columnas para poder formar una experience. Number one, do a parachute jump. Number two, go whitewater rafting. Number three, meet a famous person. Number four, ride a horse. Number five, sleep in a tent. Number six, visit a foreign country. Number seven, win a competition. Number eight, climb a mountain. And number nine, fly in an airplane. Let's continue. Mm, this part of experiences is very linked to the tense that we covered this unit that is present perfect. Ya, esta parte de vocabulario sobre experiencias está muy ligada al contenido gramatical que trabajamos, esta, esta unidad que tiene que ver con el present perfect. Son cosas que han realizado en su vida, ¿cierto? I have um, climbed a mountain, for example, ¿cierto? Entonces va muy ligado el eh, vocabulario con el tiempo que trabajamos esta unidad. Here you have to match the experience with the picture, ¿cierto? Debían unir la experiencia con la imagen. Let's see. Do a parachute jump, ¿cierto? Saltar en paracaídas. Win a competition, ganar una competencia. Visit a foreign country, visitar un país extranjero. Number three, meet a famous person, conocer una persona famosa. Number four, ride a horse, andar a caballo. Number five, climb a mountain, ¿cierto? Escalar una montaña. Six, go water, white water rafting, hacer rafting. Number seven, sleep in a tent, ¿cierto? Dormir en una carpa. Number eight, be in the newspaper, aparecer en el diario. Number nine, flying in an airplane, ¿cierto? Volar en un avión. In this part, you had to listen to four people talking about what they were experienced at the time, ¿cierto? Tienen que haber escuchado cuatro personas hablando de lo que estaban realizando, la experiencia que les estaba ocurriendo en ese momento. Let's see. Number one, they are flying in an airplane. Number two, she's doing a parachute jump. Number three, they are riding a horse. Number four, they are going white water rafting. Here, the problem was that some of you didn't notice the uh, verb tense, okay? Aquí lo que pasó un poco, la experiencia estuvieron todas correctas, fue la forma en cómo la escribieron. Ya recordad que dice what the people are doing. Aquí estaba la pista que debíamos usar el verbo, ¿cierto? Eh, eh, be. ¿Cierto? Modificado en is, are o am. Y el verbo en ing. They are flying. She is doing. They are riding. And they are going. And in the number four, some of you didn't write the verb go or going. Y aquí también lo que pasó en la número cuatro es que algunos de ustedes olvidaron el verbo go. En este caso, going. In exercise number three, you had to complete the sentences with the words in the box, ¿cierto? Debían completar la oración con la palabra correcta según el contexto. Let's see. Last year, I rode a horse on the beach. Anduve a caballo en la playa. Number one, I climbed a Concagua last summer. It's the highest mountain in South America. Number two, I met a famous person at a concert. Number three, this weekend we are going to visit a national park and sleep in a tent. Number four, I did a parachute jump last month. Number five, my dad travels a lot and he often flies in an airplane. Number six, my sister won a photography competition. Number seven, every summer we visit a different foreign country. 
And number eight, my mom is often in the newspaper because she's the mayor of our town. This exercise almost uh, every one of you got it right. La gran mayoría, creo que el 100% lo tuvo correcto because you had to look for the clues in the sentences, ¿cierto? Debíamos encontrar la, la pista que me indicara de qué experiencia estaba hablando y el contexto ayudaba muchísimo. Okay, so uh, Teacher Raúl is going to continue with the feedback of communication at the hotel. So, see you later. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing really, really well at home. And now I'm going to be revising the second part of the guide you worked on last session, okay? So, this, this second part was about communication at the hotel. And in the first exercise, you had to read the dialogue and find the information that we were asking for right here. So, let's go over the answers. So, the first name and the last name of the person checking in at the hotel was Heather Blackwell. You could find that right here, Heather Blackwell, okay? So, the number of people that were going to be staying at the hotel was four, and the type of room was a family room, okay? So here we have that the room was for four people and right here we have the kind of room they were renting, okay? A family room. And here we have the next answer, the number of nights they were going to be staying. So the answer was just one night, okay? Then we had the room number and the room number was 205 or 205, both ways are the correct way of saying the room of a hotel, okay? 205 or 205. And that information was right here, okay? Finally, we had the checkout date, the day they were leaving the hotel, and the time at which they had to leave the hotel. So, the answers were the 9th of May or 0905, okay? And the time was 11 a.m. And that information was right here. So check out tomorrow and by 11 a.m. Okay, in this answer, some of you wrote tomorrow. That is also correct, but it was more correct to say the 9th of May, because here we have a date, than to say tomorrow, because tomorrow could be any tomorrow. It, and it was an exact tomorrow. But it's okay, it is correct as well. So congratulations, you did really, really well in this exercise. Okay, so we move on to our listening exercise in which you had to listen to two people checking in and complete the charts when they, with the information provided by them. Okay, so the first person checking in was Janet Wilson. Okay, so her last name was Wilson. Okay, Wilson is written with an I and O, not with two E's. Okay, aquí muchos escribieron Wilson con dos E por alguna razón. No, Wilson, un I, una E, una O, una O. This is just like the volleyball, uh, the volleyball ball in the Castaway, that Tom Hanks movie. Okay, very nice. The number of people that were going to be staying was just one, just Janet. The type of room was single. The number of nights she was going to be staying was two, and the room was room twenty-six. Okay, very good, nice. In the second audio or part of the audio, the person checking in was Rafael Lopez. So his last name was Lopez. The number of people that were going to be staying was two. The type of room was a double room. They were going to be staying for one night and their room was room number 34. Okay, you did really well here as well. Congratulations. As I told you before, some of you had problems right here with the word Wilson, but that's nothing to be worried about and we'll continue practicing our listening skills, okay? So congratulations, let's move on. In exercise six, you had to write a dialogue using this information, okay? Check into a hotel, of course, and then record yourself and send us the audio, okay? Aquí hay que crear el diálogo ocupando esta información y después enviar el, di el diálogo grabado a nuestros correos, ¿ok? I think section B sent 
a lots of lots of audios audios i'm sorry but section a just a few people a few people sent audios okay so for the next time please all of you send your audios okay send them they they are really important to practice pronunciation si por alguna razón no puede enviar el audio porque no lo puede grabar al menos incluya el script escrito ok pero si lo puede grabar grábelo y envíelo ok so those of you who sent the audio had some problems with some words that you had to pronounce ok we'll go, we'll go over them really quickly to check pronunciation and to give you hints on how to pronounce this word correctly okay let's go so the first word was the word wood 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 is a very difficult word to pronounce okay because of the first sound the sound w w w wood okay the first sound w is like the first sound in huevo bien el sonido primer principio aquí de wood se parece al primer sonido de huevo es w w w w w w w wood okay if you get that down the rest is very simple and and you and a d wood wood okay and now the short form would be with like okay we say we we add a d with like okay and that's it the second word you had problems with was the word boat so first of all this is a word in the past tense with an ed ending okay so the ed ending is pronounced uh, the pronunciation of the ed, the ed ending i'm sorry is set by the last sound okay el último sonido antes del ed es, es lo que me dice cómo se va a pronunciar el ed okay in this case the last sound was k book 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 okay so the last sound when the last sound is a k, the next sound, that is the ed, is a t. Okay, so this word was booked. Okay, booked. Okay. Okay, the next sound, the next word was the word id. And this word, in this word, you have problems because of the I. Okay? Remember, la I in English se pronuncia I. 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 Okay? ID. Then we have the word sign. Sign. That is difficult because you have a G sound and then an N sound. Okay? Es complicado porque tenemos un sonido G después una N. Okay? But the word is pronounced signed. Signed. First the gun, gun, gun. Signed. Okay. And the last word we had was the word key. Okay. Again, in this word, la e no se pronuncia como una e, se pronuncia como una i. Y ven, mi boca está bastante tensa. Key, key, key. Okay. So those those were the words. And a bit of advice. Vamos a practicando. Al comienzo de la pronunciación es muy bueno que ustedes exageren los sonidos, ¿ya? Wu, wu, booked, booked, I, I, ¿ok? Porque de esa forma la boca se entrena para hacer estos sonidos y después más adelante se vuelve un poco más fácil decirlos, ¿ok? So that's all for pronunciation and we move to on to the closure of the class, which you had to answer or choose the best answer for these three questions so first can you sign this form please yes of course second one can i help you yes please and the last one was okay a family room for one night is that correct yes that's right okay so that was our feedback for today if you have any questions please Write us an email and Miss Anita and I will answer as soon as possible, okay? Also, please, for the next session, send the audios. Those are really important, okay? Entonces, si tienen alguna duda, nos escriben 
y vamos a tratar de responderle lo antes posible. Bien, so, see you again on the next video or our next Zoom class. Take care and see you soon. Bye.